yeah, the antitrust lawyer deal makes things a little more uh, feel a little aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's it's getting a little more competitive or confr- yeah, confrontational, maybe. Antitrust lawyer. Yeah. Hey there, race fans. Today we're tackling a topic that's been making headlines in the racing world: the ongoing negotiations between NASCAR and its teams over charter agreements. The adrenaline-fueled world of NASCAR, where high speeds and intense rivalries are the name of the game. But behind the scenes, a different kind of race is taking place. A race for a fair deal between NASCAR and its teams. In the fast-paced world of professional racing, money talks. And right now, NASCAR teams are demanding a bigger piece of the pie. But why? It all comes down to the charter system, NASCAR's version of franchises, which were introduced in 2016 to give teams more stability and value. NASCAR famous Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Denny Hamlin had a lot to say on the ongoing debate. Buckle up, as we've got a lot to cover. But before we dive deep into all things NASCAR, subscribe to the channel. Picture this, it's the eve of the 2024 racing season, and tensions are running high between NASCAR and its Premier Series teams. The clock is ticking as the current charter agreement inches closer to its expiration date. But instead of a unified front, we witnessed frustration and deadlock between the two sides. Let's break it down. After NASCAR signed a record $1.1 billion per year media contract for 2025 and beyond, teams are negotiating for a higher share of revenue. However, the governing body claims teams don't see the costs associated with running and maintaining the tracks, and even declined the meeting called up by the teams and owners in Daytona. Teams are demanding more funding to bolster their business models, citing the hefty costs of running a racing operation. With corporate sponsorships covering 60-80% of their budgets and expenses, soaring upwards of $20 million per year per car, it's clear why they're pushing for a better deal. NASCAR, on the other hand, acknowledges the need for increased funding, but wants to implement measures like a budget cap to rein in spending. They've even sweetened the pot by offering to increase payouts from media rights, aiming for a more equitable split between the league and teams. But here's where it gets juicy. The original charter deal, implemented in 2016, has brought NASCAR closer to a league-like operation. However, with negotiations stalling and the charter agreement set to expire, teams are flexing their muscles by letting the negotiation window lapse, sending a clear message of their discontent. With stakes high and tensions higher, the future of NASCAR hangs in the balance. While teams want permanent charters and a bigger slice of the media revenue pie, NASCAR's willing to increase payouts, but finding common ground remains elusive. Denny Hamlin, co-owner of 2311 Racing, expressed his disappointment over the developments in the charter agreement negotiations with NASCAR during the Daytona 500 weekend. The Joe Gibbs racing driver elaborated that the negotiating committee had invited NASCAR's CEO and chairman Jim France for a meeting in Daytona. However, despite being in town for the season opener, the executives declined the invitation. In the latest episode of Actions Detrimental, Denny Hamlin touched upon the matter, expressing his disappointment over the lack of response from NASCAR. I mean, so what I hear Curtis saying there is that uh, there's been no negotiation, right? I I do know that the team owners met on Saturday. I was was there. The invitation was extended to uh, Jim France that was in town. He declined that uh, invitation. I think uh, it's disappointing. Certainly, I I can't think of a league or a commissioner would decline meeting with his team owners. That's very disappointing. And all I think the teams are wondering is, you know, you, you said no over and over and over to us. We're just looking for an explanation of why, and we haven't got that why yet, other than it just is. Owing to the announcement, Cup Series teams naturally wanted a bigger share of the broadcasting revenue. When team owners reached out to NASCAR to discuss the same, 2311 racing owners, Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan, added valuable inputs to the conversation. That's not all. Being a former majority owner of the Charlotte Hornets and having observed the business side of sports closely, 2311 team owner Michael Jordan was among the leading contributors to it. Hamlin revealed his partner, Jordan's importance, in one of his podcasts. Yeah, Michael uh, attended. It was great to hear, you know, voices like his and Rick Hendrick and Roger Penske. You know, everyone's just kind of right there and hearing these guys that are very versed in business, right? Hearing uh, their side and how they feel and uh, 
certainly I believe that all the teams are aligned in the sense of uh, they all feel the same way. Despite the exclusive negotiation window having earlier expired at the end of 2023, it was extended. However, NASCAR and the Cup team owners have failed to strike a deal. Meanwhile, in a bold move, teams have hired renowned antitrust lawyer Jeffrey Kessler to advise them, who is regarded as the Michael Jordan of sports litigation. Kessler has led litigations representing Tom Brady and the NFLPA and advocated for equal pay for the U.S. women's national soccer team. Denny Hamlin believes Kessler's hiring is a big step for the owners, emphasizing how much of a big deal the charter system is. Curtis Polk, a part owner of 2311 Racing and member of the team's negotiating committee said, We want to make a deal. We are just looking for a fair deal. There is no give and take. This is all there is. There is no flexibility. That's not a negotiation. I think the sport is a sleeping giant, but we all have to get the interest aligned because we need to grow it together. We need to grow more revenue and we need to create great sharing and an arrangement where every dollar that is created benefits the drivers, benefits the teams, benefits the tracks, benefits NASCAR. That's not how it's set up right now. Other team executives like the HMS vice chairman, Jeff Gordon and RFK Racing President Steve Newman have made it clear that their teams cannot be sustained under the current business model. Gordon also admitted that Hendrick Motorsports hasn't turned a profit in 10 years. Kessler's reputation precedes him and his involvement adds another layer of intrigue to the negotiations. Will his expertise tip the scales in the team's favor? Moving to what NASCAR veteran Dale Earnhardt Jr., who is also a proud team owner, had to share about the organization's decision. The JR Motorsports co-owner, who fields race cars in the Xfinity series, then opined how things will probably play out as NASCAR readies for a meeting at an individual level. Dale Earnhardt Jr. dissected NASCAR's decision to turn down its meeting with RTA. One of the big dominating uh, storylines of the of the entire week was the charter news. NASCAR executives turned down invites to meetings with the teams. The the NASCAR you know the teams were like, hey, let's all come together, let's get in the room. Come on, NASCAR, we're all gonna meet together. Uh, meet with the teams individually. If I'm NASCAR, I like that. I think it's going on. All the teams they're unified in the RTA, the Race Team Alliance. They all want to. Uh, band together and appear you know appear that they're all like-minded united. and united yeah and then you have a couple of the teams that are the spokesmen the truth is they're not all like-minded some teams may maybe don't want to make things difficult on nascar some teams some teams in the back end of this rta may be like you know what I, i'm good with this deal right if i if there wasn't you know if there wasn't a bunch of these guys pushing back trying to get a better deal i'd probably take this deal so that's why i think nascar wants to meet with them individually so it's more like trying to go to each individual to individual team and steer everything closer to an agreement probably nascar probably feels it's easier to make that happen talking to them one at a time as opposed to all getting in the room and just shouting while the media rights contract will certainly allow the organization to spread its wings reaching out to its international fans not everyone is content with the new charter system now amidst these extension struggles, Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin's 2311 racing is rumored to be going one step forward. The latest buzz centers around the 2311 racing team, rumored to be eyeing a third charter in the upcoming 2025 season. This move could set off a three-way clash involving rising giants Trackhouse Racing and RFK Racing. Veteran spotters Freddie Kraft and Brett Griffin have hinted at a brewing battle for charters, with Kraft suggesting that one or more Tier 1 teams could be seeking additional charters. Could 2311 Racing be one of them? However, competition is fierce. Trackhouse Racing, co-owned by Justin Marks and Pitbull, boasts a talented lineup and two existing charters. Likewise, Brad Keselowski's RFK Racing is vying for a third charter, backed by Ford Performance and eyeing expansion into the International Motorsports Association. So the question is which teams will make room for 2311 Racing's potential expansion? For now, 2311 Racing fans must wait eagerly as Tyler Reddick and Bubba Wallace lead the charge in the number 45 and number 23 cars, respectively. But with the recent appearance of Kamui Kobayashi in the number 50 Toyota, could a permanent third driver be on the horizon? As the rumor mill churns and negotiations unfold, the NASCAR world braces for a potential seismic shift.
As negotiations continue, one thing is clear, the stakes are high, and both NASCAR and its teams are in it for the long haul. Will NASCAR and its teams reach a compromise before the current charter expires? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, the race for a fair deal in NASCAR is far from over. With key players like Michael Jordan and Jeff Gordon in the mix, anything is possible. And there you have it, folks, the latest chapter in the NASCAR Charter Negotiations saga. Hit that like button, share and subscribe for more interesting updates on everything NASCAR. Until next time, keep the conversation going on Lucky Dog on Track.